Hello, good afternoon, Shelly, sir. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Thank, Dr. You. Dr. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining. Not, Anupam, not, sir. not an issue. Always pleasure. <laughs> and Pandey, sir, thanks for joining. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So I think Thakar, sir, uh, is in flight, maybe. So already he mentioned. But uh, anyway, if he will join, we will connect him immediately. So and once again, uh, on behalf of side, it's really a great honor for us to have a discussion on that particular issue. So I must request uh, Ankit to please start the session. Thank you so much, sir. Distinguished guests, respected participants, and esteemed colleagues, good afternoon and welcome to our national webinar on Joshi Mutt, a wake up call for Himalayan urban resilience. I am Ankit Sengupta, a research assistant at SIAD, and it is my great pleasure to extend a warm welcome to all of you. We are privileged to have with us some of the most distinguished leaders and expect, uh, experts in the field whose dedication and expertise are driving the vision of a sustainable and resilient future for our nation, particularly in the fragile Himalayan region. Joshi Mutt, a municipality in Uttarakhand's Chamoli district, serves as a critical case study for our discussion today. Situated in the Garhwal Himalayas, this town holds immense cultural, religious, and strategic importance. As a gateway to several pilgrimage sites, Joshimat exemplifies the delicate balance between development and environmental pre preservation. The crisis that struck Joshimat in January 2023, causing subsidence, cracks, and tilting of buildings serves as a stark reminder of the challenges faced by Himalayan towns. This event highlights the urgent need to address issues such as geological fragility, anthropogenic pressure, rapid urbanization, and the impact of large-scale infrastructure projects. The discussions and insights we share today will contribute significantly to shaping policies and governance that align with our collective goal of achieving urban resilience in the Himalayan region. We must learn from the Joshimut crisis to ensure the sustainable development of other vulnerable mountain towns. We look forward to the insightful discussions that will undoubtedly follow. Your participation and expertise are invaluable as we work together towards a more sustainable and resilient future for our Himalayan communities. Thank you all for joining us. I now invite Dr. Bishwajit Roy Chaudhary, Chairperson of SIAD, to present the welcome address and continue today's program. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ankit. And first of all, on behalf of South Asian Institute for Advanced Research and Development, SIAD, I heartily welcome to all the delegates for today's dialogue session. And as you know, that SIAD from its very inception is looking forward to have such kind of discussions and uh, on different issues related to the climate change, sustainability, disaster sector, urban uh, water sector, security, and all that. And the major points which we face in our day to day life due to the changes of climate, due to the changes of our atmo um, anthropogenic atmosphere, and also the segments which should be highlighted through our different initiations. And today's dialogue, we are looking forward to do in that way that with, with on such uh, important issue. I think everybody, uh, those who are belongs to the particularly not only the mountain areas, but also either maybe the coastal or island areas, we are all now in a single point agenda 
that is the climate change. And this the impact, maybe I'm not the specialist in that uh, case, but somehow it is all related either directly or indirectly to us. So today, the speakers, those who have joined from the different expertise level, I mean, Dr. Shailesh sir, uh, Anupam sir, and also Rajiv sir, Thakar sir. So I, we would like to know the, the fallacies, whether it's our call, whether it's the natural call, and what is the reason, even what are the initiations we can take? Because we are not interested only for blaming and blaming, but we are looking forward to find have some solution. And in that perspective, it is very much required to highlight those kind of issues. It's not a part to hide something. It's a part to uh, come in front, face the challenge, and how we could be overcome in such kind of uh, problem, through such kind of problems. So that is the main agenda of this today's session. And we are looking forward to hear from all of you to get guidance. And on that basis, we will prepare a small concept note and whatever the outcomes will be generated. And as that the record as we did our own uh, webinars through some recording, and we have a Syed uh, YouTube channel, and there you will be happy to know that more than two hundred dialogues on different domains are enlisted. Anybody, if you like to, and as a non-profit R and D think tank organization, we are sharing that every knowledge at a free of cost, and as that people would able to know what is happening and what are the remedies and what kind of strategies are being adopted and in place of the resilience purposes. So I think that this is a very uh, timely initiative. And in future, we can also think about it. One more thing I would like to also inform about SIAD, that SIAD is working as a think tank organizations, connecting the bridges between the academia, industry, government, and stakeholders. And through our different initiatives, we are connecting not only the international communities with the Indian uh, knowledge exchange sector, but also what kind of remedies can be possible or the best practices, knowledge exchange dialogue uh, ideas can be generated through that way. And as we are mostly focusing on the three, four verticals, that is the Himalayan sector, uh, coastal sector, <coughs> island and river sectors. So we have developed under SIAD, considering the relevance and the climate change issues of the Himalayan region, that is the Himalayan Climate Consortium. And the focal theme of the Himalayan Climate Consortium is to connect all the Himalayan states, including India and outside, those who are associated with the Himalayan climate, because maybe we are the plain land people, but somehow directly or indirectly we are associated with the, any kind of climate change related issues or sustainability related issues in the Himalayan sector. So we are looking forward to work through that combination, uh, through that consortium. And in close with the close proximity with the expertise and your organizations, already we got connected some uh, some scientists from Nepal, Kathmandu University, from the University of Leeds, and uh, yesterday we had a dialogue on the GLOF and its resilience measurement sector, and those with those who are actually working on that field. So today's session, I think that is also very much important in that perspective. In case it's not the matter of Joshi or maybe. We, if we take prevention or precautions from the very beginning, we could prevent such kind of Joshimas in future also from other people. So that's why I didn't, uh, I'm not uh, saying no longer about this initiation. We are mostly keenly interested to hear from all of your expertise level. So that's why I stop here and I will be very much honored and happy that you have given your kind consent to be a part of this session. And look forward in coming future to work in closely in, with your organization and with your expertise level. Thank you so much. And once again, I request to Ankit to please continue today's session. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you so much, sir. Without further ado, I would like to invite our guest of honor, Dr. Shailesh Kumar Agarwal. Executive Director of BMTPC, Government of India, to present his address. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ankit. And uh, thank you, Dr. Chaudhary, for inviting me uh, for this uh, very apt topic. And uh, I will uh, restrict myself to, you know, uh, uh, journal uh, uh, urban infrastructure resilience, which is applicable to the entire country. And what has happened in Joshi, but all of us know, and uh, I find uh, director of Wadi Institute, then uh, 
persons from Uttarakhand uh, Disaster Management Center. So they will be talking uh, to you about uh, uh, what really happened in Joshimath. But being in government of India, uh, what is to be done uh, as regards urban infrastructure resilience? Uh, let me uh, give you my thoughts on that in general. Also, uh, through this platform, let me tell you that Honorable Prime Minister has already given 10 points uh, PM's 10-point agenda on disaster risk reduction. There are 10 points which I will be telling you, and if we follow them in letter and respect, in fact, uh, uh, organizations like NDMA, NIDM, and other uh, academic institutions, they have already been doing, uh, they are taking one point at a time and, uh, you know, deliberating on that and trying to uh, build on that. So uh, those 10 points agenda of uh, Honorable Prime Minister uh, uh, will definitely help us in uh, creating uh, the urban uh, resilience uh, with regard to infrastructure and other things. So uh, good afternoon uh, to all of you uh, uh, who are present today for this very apt webinar on Joshimut, a wake up call for uh, Himalayan urban resilience. I would like to give in general my thoughts on uh, urban infrastructure resilience, which is applicable not only to Joshimut, but to the entire country so as to prevent new and existing disaster risks ultimately contributing to uh, resilience and uh, sustainable development. If I uh, have to share with you the data, in, as per one uh, UN report, uh, India has experienced a staggering economic loss of $79.5 billion due to climate-related disasters over the past two decades. Natural disasters inflicted a loss of $232 billion uh, in 2019 alone. So around $80 million US dollar economic losses due to climate-related disasters and natural disasters contributed to the loss of uh, $232 billion uh, US dollar. Beyond economic damage, the e environmental losses such as uh, destruction of soil cover, flora, fauna, and entire ecosystem are even more significant. Also, natural hazards, natural hazards such as floods, hurricanes, droughts are inherent to uh, Earth's dynamic systems. However, uh, the increasing uh, frequency and intensity of these events are largely driven by human activities, including urbanization, deforestation, and greenhouse gas emission. Thus, it is imperative for all of us to adopt proactive measures, not only for disaster prevention and reduction, but also for restoration and coexistence of natural and human uh, systems. While eliminating uh, you know, losses from natural disasters entirely may not be attainable, they can be mitigated, however, through the integration of ancient wisdom and contemporary knowledge. So there is a need to create a synergy between what uh, we knew and what we know now. Uh, this includes, you know, employing uh, both structural and non-structural uh, strategies for risk management uh, initiatives such as SINDA uh, framework for uh, DR, disaster risk reduction, which is in existence right now from 2015 to 2030, have laid the groundwork for uh, global disaster preparedness and resilience. And SINDA framework is a very comprehensive document. And uh, I tell all the participants here that at least go through that Sendai framework document and uh, you will find answers to most of your queries. Uh, the Sendai framework emphasizes a shift from disaster management to disaster risk management by addressing the root causes of risk. It underscores the shared responsibility among various stakeholders, including governments, local communities, private sector, and civil society. In reducing disaster risks. In line with uh, Honorable Prime Minister's uh, 10 point agenda for uh, efforts towards disaster risk reduction, these agendas focused on imbibing disaster risk reduction principles and strategies by all developmental sectors working towards risk coverage for all from urban, uh, for, uh, from poor households to multinational corporations and developing a network of universities. Uh, to work on disaster issues. The Prime Minister's agenda also recognizes uh, the importance of involving research institutions, institutions like SIAD, and the wider academia in advancing the understanding of disaster. Let me just uh, uh, 
uh, read for you uh, prime minister standpoint agenda uh, number one is the all development sectors must imbibe the principle of disaster risk management number two develop a network of universities to work on disasters number three work towards risk coverage for all number four utilize the opportunities provided by social media and mobile technologies number five encourage greater participation and leadership of women in disaster risk management number six build on local capacities and initiatives number seven invest in risk mapping globally number seven uh, number seven uh, eight ensure that the opportunities to learn from disasters is not wasted leverage technology to enhance the efficiency of our uh, disaster risk management efforts and last but not the least bring about a greater cohesion in international responses to disasters disasters have potential to raise the decades of uh, developmental efforts and divert resources away from essential sectors like education health and infrastructure consequently disaster management is crucial component of urban planning as cities without resilient infrastructures are exceptionally vulnerable to disasters now let me just very briefly tell you uh, what is urban uh, infrastructure resilience urban infrastructure resilience refers to the ability of physical systems within a city to withstand adapt and to recover from extreme weather events while maintaining their essential functions so resilience uh, urban resilience encompasses four uh, key dimensions uh, let me just uh, elaborate on that number one is ecological resilience when we talk about urban infrastructure resilience there are four key dimensions one is ecological another one is social third is governance and fourth is economic so eco ecological uh, resilience means the capacity of ecosystems to absorb disturbances and regenerate while maintaining functionality in urban areas green spaces wetland and the biodiversity play a crucial role in mitigating the impact of extreme weather events next is social resilience the ability of communities to adapt recover and thrive in the face of adversity social networks community engagements and education are pivotal uh, uh, to foster resilience uh, number three uh, is governor uh, governance resilience uh, which is uh, flexible and adaptive governance structures that enable learning and adaptation in response to changing conditions effective disaster management policies and institutions are very vital for coordinating uh, response efforts and uh, fourth is economic resilience the capacity of our economies to absorb shocks and recover swiftly uh, diversified economies risk transfer mechanisms and financial instruments are essential in building uh, economic resilience so resilience is not merely about physical infrastructure but uh, but also about fostering hol holistic and integrated approaches that consider the interconnectedness of social economic and environmental system all future mitigation programs must focus on empowering communities and institutions to reduce hazard risk and respond effectively to disasters thank you very much for inviting me and uh, jai hind thank you sir thank you for your nice points you have mentioned the em 10 point agenda as well and i think uh, let's continue the discussion first and after that we will go for our interactive session so uh, please keep in touch with us and i will request ankit please uh, invite our next speaker dr anupam sharma sir please thank you sir thank you sir now i would like to invite dr anupam sharma scientist g birbal saini institute of paleo sciences government of india to present his plenary lecture over to you sir thank you dr ankit and uh, dr uh, dr choudhury for inviting me uh, and uh, and good afternoon to everyone present in this meeting uh, 
I'm sorry to state in the beginning that uh, there was uh, some miscommunication or something that uh, initially I thought that uh, Dr. Chaudhary is interested in Dr. Tucker. And uh, that is why he asked me to give his phone number. So I was not knowing that even if I have to do anything in this meeting. Uh, only yesterday night at that time also I was in uh, somewhere in the traffic. So I didn't hear very much clearly that what is what but tomorrow today morning sometime uh, because it is saturday so i was involved in some other things also so uh, something around 10 11 i saw that um, my picture is there and my title is written and all those things are there so i am sorry because uh, i have not prepared otherwise i would have prepared in a much better manner so what could i have uh, means uh, through my knowledge of uh, or uh, going through when this uh, this happening was going on the newspaper reports and all other things so what i could gather means i have prepared some four or five slides so i will talk on this particularly as uh, i also want to say that basically i am a geochemist and uh, not working on like slide or subsidence or those kind of things but definitely uh, uh, other aspects of geological nature which are re relevant to this subject i will try to to incorporate those things and uh, i i hope uh, that uh, it will make uh, some uh, sense and some uh, use to all of us thank you so i'll sharing the ppt It is not coming. Okay. So the event uh, has, uh, has already <coughs> been uh, talked about by Yankit and Dr. Chaudhary. My topic of uh, the talk is Himalayan urbanization, natural versus and and the road ahead. Basically, uh, this is the case. Uh, means this happened in uh, Joshimat, but uh, there are many other towns and cities in the Himalayan region which are facing more or less similar kind of uh, threats. And uh, this has happened in one place, but other places are also very vulnerable. And therefore, it is high time that uh, we put a particular uh, aspect in in a more comprehensive manner and uh, and safeguard of our future, uh, particularly those uh, towns and cities they are there in the Himalayan terrain. So here are some pictures that I have taken from internet only and this event particularly that happened basically on 2nd January 2023 night and uh, because of that uh, you can see that in the first picture uh, how dense is the um, how dense is the uh, all, all the, these uh, buildings and different uh, uh, setup uh, which is which is looking very very high which is beyond the capacity of that particular area it seems okay so <clears throat> and you find in the in the bottom panel a few figures and images where we can see that uh, how and, the and, uh, yes yeah, sorry to interrupt. your your slide is not moving uh, it is still in the first page yeah it's still on the first page yes 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 you can it is not going moving Oh, you just click on the second page. Yeah, I have clicked. Uh, but we saw only the first page. Yeah. First phase was shared and then it is not coming. Yeah. No, no, no. 
can you reshare again sir please okay i see maybe some technical issues are there now it's coming to the third page okay okay <laughs> Okay, okay, so uh, second page, quick click. Easy, yeah. Now it's come. Now you please share it, sir, in slide share mode. Ah, okay, uh, it is coming now. Uh, not yet. Slide share mode, pay uh, we slide mode, pay here. Slide share. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. No, maybe uh, this not, is a uh, bigger. So I, I move on. Anyway, to the next. I'll, I'll, sure, I'll, I'll continue. Please, yes, sir. Please, I'll continue. Okay, I, I, I hope uh, this this slide will come. Basically, I have divided this uh, particularly in two sectors. Uh, the one is that what are the natural reasons behind, and uh, second one is the what is the anthropogenic control, and then I will uh, final. Uh, go to the final slide which is uh, what uh, what starts to be taken so if you see particularly from this Yosemite area this area is uh, located near the mct that is a main central thrust which is a very seismically active himalayan fault zone and this entire region comes under the seismic zone 5 which is the most vulnerable category of the uh, seismic uh, activity the town is situated on Nices and Sistroths, which inherently have uh, these kind of uh, issues. They, they are weak planes into it as compared to any other massive rocks like granite or, or, or basalt or something like that. Granite, diorite, diorite, and pro kind of things, which are massive in nature, whereas because these are metamorphic rocks and they have uh, either the planar surfaces or cystocities, they are nisocities there because of that. They are relatively weaker as compared to other massive rocks. And this comes under the Munsuari formation overlain by moranic deposits, which are otherwise much more uh, relatively weak because it has all size of boulders, uh, right from uh, very big size to, up, uh, to uh, if you go to the final level up to the clay size, which is in microns. So, the, and the, the, because of that, it, the water holding capacity also is very, very different. Uh, in all together uh, what is the kind of the matrix what kind of uh, boulders are there and because of that uh, it it makes the region more vulnerable then sudden increase in elevation because uh, it is it is uh, coming uh, because of this uh, mct fault there is a, a sudden increase in the elevation and the steepness around the jyoti mud and uh, that basically caused the high rainfall because the monsoon winds laden by uh, moisture they hit uh, this region and because of that a uh, lot of rains uh, this this area basically receives which uh, also caused the water erosion and increase the water erosion rates next is that the water flowing through the weakly bonded soil and debris causes erosion creep sliding of the slope which is a very natural cause because if the water is there then it increases the load and uh, because of that and also it reduces uh, the cohesiveness and this the friction is reduced and, we, and that that uh, increases the rate further yeah. another important aspect is that the alaknanda and dholiganga rivers tend to erode the base of the jyotima slope further adding to its instability and a combination of ecological factors uh, steep slopes high rainfall deforestation because of overpopulation overloading of soil because of infrastructure kind of development with this limited load bearing capacity these are some of the ecological factors and are responsible for is bringing structural instability into the region coming to the anthropogenic factors the increasing population in my view it is the biggest problem behind many issues particularly in this case also because for sustenance for a large population you need uh, a lot many things are needed such as water food energy uh, you, you, that is why that uh, for local needs as well as to surrounding areas need uh, the hydropower uh, electricity generation and similarly for dwelling and because this is a this is a place uh, important for pilgrimage as well as because of Himalayan natural beauty, it is uh, they, those uh, brings uh, added uh, things into it, and that increase uh, the the visitors load. 
so th this is uh, a, a major cause that the, uh, the carrying capacity of the region is uh, much lower as compared to and if you see the last couple of years data then you will find that the people uh, though the residents there that is also doubled in last uh, uh, couple of years if you see in uh, in the last census of 2011 it is something uh, close to 17000 uh, Okay, but uh, then uh, families, but then it increased to uh, more than 25,000. So that is already gone doubled. And then a the lot of uh, government uh, uh, installations are there because of uh, because of security, because of uh, this, the military installations has, has come up because of this, the hydro uh, that uh, project has come up. And then a uh, lot of uh, hotels and those kind of things have come up lodges and those facilities and uh, so all have becoming uh, gone beyond the carrying capacity of that region and besides this the poorly conceived infrastructure projects which include hydroelectric construction of then construction of wider roads this chardham yatra and uh, those things uh, these are uh, roads are widening up similarly then turning for extending the railways and other infrastructure constructions so they are basically adding to vulnerability. And similarly, this, this also caused the obstruction of natural flow of the water. Here in particular case, the hydroelectric power project is also a matter of concern because they have made a large shaft into it and then subsidiary shafts also in the nearby region. And because of that lot of um, those activity particularly the blasting and all that already these this this uh, the that i just told you in last slide that the geologically that rocks and the morainic sediment does not have uh, that much of strength and this blasting is uh, further adding into it uh, the vulnerability similarly then uh, private and government construction work such as hotels lodges military installation other projects they are all all increasing uh, increasing the vulnerability and particularly for uh, as i told just now that josimas is the gateway for famous pilgrimages like badrinath and hamkum Sahib. apart from this the tourism uh, activity is also bringing a challenge a number of places such as valley of flowers nanda devi national park ski slopes of folly sector they are the attraction points for visitors so their number is also increasing 2019 data says that uh, for more than 5 lakh people visited their area and that number is increasing uh, with every passing years. So these are the causes and they are all uh, man-made causes. This is not the natural causes. So beside uh, 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 that, uh, that I said in the initial uh, uh, part of this, that not only here is it a particular case of subsidence, but other cities of the Himalayan like Dharmshala, Shimla, Uttarkasi, Mussoorie, Gopeshwar, Nanital, Gangtok, Darjeeling, they are also threatened and there are many others which I have not uh, written here because of soil creep, landslides and, and, and ground subsidence. So what is the road ahead? The road ahead, basically, we have what we have to do that we have to plan in such a way that uh, it is to be based on careful assessment of an area's carrying capacity is the first requirement for safe urban development in the mountains. Secondly, the stability of India's mountain towns also falls prey to ill-conceived infrastructure project and not to be addressed because whatever the buildings are coming up, they are not following the uh, following the, the the guidelines according to which uh, it has to be constructed then the large number of local trees should be planted to bind the soil because all these whether you are building a road or a building or a tunnel or railways so you have to clear the land and in the in the process you have to cut the trees so that is became uh, be, uh, bringing more vulnerability because then uh, loose uh, soil become loose and uh, erosion is uh, become easier. So to uh, to to uh, control this, we have to plant wherever the space is available uh, at more trees. Similarly, the knowledge and experience of local people combined with sound understanding of geology, ecology, and uh, changing climate 
because uh, it is not that what was earlier and we will uh, follow the same because we know that climate is changing and under this climate change scenario it is essential for building disaster resilience all future infrastructure project is to be designed not only based on past weather trends and data must incorporate safety factors for future extreme weather events under the current climate changing scenarios our model of development should be based on growing in harmony with nature this will result into rapid growth while sustainability increasing the productivity of our natural resources and sharing them more equitably all this will be possible only when communities have control over their local natural resources and more importantly equally important is that because in this case also we have seen that right from 1970s there are report mission report is there earlier studies geological studies are there we are saying that how vulnerable the place is and then subsequently lot many and local people have also made agitations they have also given uh, their memorandum for uh, the, the for that the cracks are appearing and uh, right from after 1976 and particularly in this after 2000 uh, there are multiple uh, at uh, times the people have uh, gone written approached uh, uh, to the government but uh, uh, ultimately all the time it is overlooked so it is important that uh, their voice should be heard in a more uh, uh, yeah, sensitivity and whatever the studies reports and observations scientific uh, Uh, the scientifically scientifically data based research is coming up and what are the what are the observations and uh, the, the 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 steps they are uh, suggesting they should be taken by authorities very very seriously if all these things is to be taken into account i think that uh, uh, we can prevent uh, such kind of disaster in many other vulnerable areas Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So your insights about Joshi Mart and the scientific reasons uh, uh, behind the subsidence and the practical knowledge that you shared uh, for the subsidence and the catastrophe that has happened in Joshi Mart was really insightful. We really appreciate your insights, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite the honourable speaker, Mr. Rajiv Pandey, Project Officer, Uttarakhand Urban Development Directorate, Government of Uttarakhand, to present his address. Over to you, sir. Uh, Dhanyavad, uh, Ankit, uh, Dr. Chaudhary, sir. Uh, uh, मिनियंट यूनिवर्सिटी पे जो बैठे हैं और जो हमारे स्पीकर्स हैं मैं बेसिकली इसका एक्सपर्ट नहीं हूँ अर्बन रिजिलेंस का लेकिन जैसे आपने कहा कि अर्बन पे हम लोग काफी काम कर रहे हैं जो टॉपिक्स थे उसमें दो टॉपिक्स जो हमारे कंसर्न पे आते थे अर्बनाइजेशन एंड इन्वायरमेंटल स्ट्रेस और कम्युनिटी पार्टिसिपेशन के आते हैं अगर हम बैकअप में जाए तो ये टॉपिक आज के डेट में स्पेशली हिमालय रीजन के लिए सभी कंट्री के बहुत स्पेसिफिक हो जाता है केवल अभी तो स्टार्टिंग थी 2023 में जोशीमठ में इस साल वही काम बागेश्वर और रुद्रप्रयाग में स्टार्टिंग हो चुका है कई कई टाउन्स में कई लोकल विलेजेस में वही चीजें जो वहां पर जोशीमठ में देखने आई थी वो चीज देखने को आ रही है जोशीमठ का अगर हम उल्लेख करें तो वो जनवरी टू को जो स्टार्ट हुआ था 2023 को वो फर्स्ट स्टार्टिंग थी जब जब एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन को ये पता लगा था कि कई जगह पे दरारें आ गई हैं जब एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन आगे आया था उसने लोकल से कॉल किया था तो पता लगा था ये ये कई सालों से हो रहा है लेकिन अब इमिनेंट है और जो जनवरी टू से जनवरी एट तक चला था जिसमें बहुत ज्यादा हो गया था बहुत ज्यादा इंक्रीज हुआ था वन वीक में और उसके बाद स्लो डाउन हो गया था तो वो उस वीक में जब एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन uh, की रिपोर्टिंग uh, की थी तो करीबन थ्री फिफ्टी फाइव हाउसेज जो आए थे जो इससे जो अफेक्टेड हुए थे इस uh, इस डिजास्टर से uh, 
जो कि उसके बाद उनको एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ने शिफ्ट किया था और जो लोकल वहां पे हमारे होटल्स थे या नगर पालिका थे हेडक्वार्टर थे उन्हें शिफ्ट किया गया था या कुछ लोग अपने लोकल भी चले गए थे उनको 5000 पर मंथ के हिसाब से 6 मंथ्स का कंपनसेशन भी स्टेट गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से दिया गया था जोशीमठ को अगर आप डिस्क्राइब करें तो जोशीमठ में जैसे साइंटिस्ट सर ने कहा कि ये बेसिकली एक सस्मिक जोन में फाइट में है जोशीमठ एक हमारे चमोली का जनपद का एक टाउन है ये ऑलरेडी एक लैंडस्लाइड फ्लड प्रोन और अर्थक्वेक प्रोन एरिया रहा है 1919 में यहां 6.8 रेक्चर स्केल का मैग्नीट्यूड का अर्थक्वेक आया था फरवरी 7 2001 में यहां फ्लड जोन रहा है बहुत बड़ी फ्लड आया था और जो वहां पे दो हाइड्रो पावर प्रोजेक्ट्स थे उनमें बहुत नुकसान हुआ था और लोकल पे भी काफी नुकसान नुकसान हुए थे ऑलरेडी ये एरिया बहुत ही सेंसिटिव है दूसरा ये है कि ये बद्रीनाथ को जाने का और दूसरा जो हमारे धाम है वहां जाने का रास्ता है तो ये एक सेंटर पॉइंट हो जाता है जहां पे नंबर ऑफ प्लेब्यूम्स रात में रुकते हैं इसकी कैपेसिटी उतनी नहीं है जितना नंबर्स ऑफ हाउसेस और होटल्स और या मोटल्स वहां पे खुल गए हैं एज पर द सेंसस 2011 को काउंट करें तो 16000 की पॉपुलेशन 709 की पॉपुलेशन थी आ, आ, उसके बाद जो सेंसस सेंसस नहीं जो एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ने कराया था 2023 में वो पॉपुलेशन 23395 बढ़ गई थी अगर इसकी अर्बन लोकल्स बॉडीज को कवर करें इसमें करीबन 9 वार्ड्स हैं जिस पे कुछ वार्ड्स ज्यादा स्कैटर्ड है और जो जो प्रोन एरियाज थे वो करीबन 4 एरियाज ऐसे थे जिस पे बहुत ज्यादा डिजास्टर हुआ था अभी स्ट्रक्चर्स की बात करें जो एग्जिस्टिंग है वो अभी भी जो वहां जो टेक्निक्स यूज की जाती हैं बिल्डिंग्स और उसमें बनाने के लिए वो बेसिकली स्ट्रेन और स्टोन और ब्रिक मैसनरी का है आरसी फ्रेमवर्क है या वर्निकल वुड्स पोस्ट विद स्टोन मैसनरी फिल्स में काम किया जाता है अभी भी लोग वहां पे जो कंस्ट्रक्शंस हो रहा है वो लोकल मार्केट से ही खरीद के कंस्ट्रक्शन करते हैं जो लोकल मटेरियल्स है उनको यूज किया जाता है और लेबर कॉस्ट लेबर जो है वो वहां के लेबर्स हैं वही को लेबर्स के माध्यम से वो मनाया जाता है तो दो चीजें जो उसमें फाइंड होती हैं कि अभी भी वहां पे कोई भी ऐसी टेक्निक्स भी नहीं है जिसके आधार पे वो सस्पेक्ट जोन्स को प्रोन टेक्निक्स यूज करके अपने आवाज बना सके या ये जो लेबर्स हैं वो इतने स्किल नहीं है कि उनको स्किल किया जा सके प्रेजेंटली जो बिल्डिंग बायलॉज हैं वो एग्जिस्ट करते हैं वहां पे लेकिन रेजिडेंशियल बिल्डिंग्स के लिए वो मैंडेटरी नहीं है वहां पे अभी भी कोई भी बिल्डिंग परमिट सिस्टम नहीं है जिसके कारण जो भी अनप्लान डेवलपमेंट हो रहा है या जो डिस्ट्रक्शन हो रहा है अनप्लान डिस्ट्रक्शन हो रहा है वो एक बहुत बड़ा कॉज है जिसको स्टेट गवर्नमेंट अब एक काफी सीरियसली ले रही है और पूरे जो हाईली एरियाज के लिए है वो प्लान डेवलपमेंट या जो रेजिडेंट जो बिल्डिंग परमिट सिस्टम है उसको कंपलसरी करने पर विचार कर रही है अदरवाइज जो और भी हमारे जो नौ जो हिली एरियाज हैं उनको भी वो इफेक्ट करेगा जोशीमठ में जो टाउन प्लानिंग तो जो रिस्क इनफॉर्म लैंड यूज के मैप्स हैं वो कोई भी नहीं है जिसके कारण जितना भी अनडेवलपमेंट प्लान हो रहा है वो इसी कारण से हो रहा है और जो जो सिचुएशंस है मेरे ख्याल में जितने भी हमारे हिली टाउन्स हैं चाहे वो उत्तराखंड के हों या हिमालय स्टेट्स के हों उनमें सब जगह ये स्थिति है कि कोई भी प्लान वे में अभी भी डेवलपमेंट या डेवलपमेंट का कोई प्लान रखा नहीं गया जिसके कारण ये सारी सिचुएशंस पैदा हो रही हैं इसी को देखते हुए स्टेट ने डिसाइड किया है कि एक कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव डेवलपमेंट प्लान होगा जो कंडक्ट करेगा रिलायंस ऑफ बिल्डिंग वाटर एंड सैनिटेशन सॉलिड एयर लिक्विड वाटर डिस्पोजल पावर अक्रॉस रोड्स और अदर फैसिलिटीज को सच एज स्कूल हॉस्पिटल बैंक्स बिजनेस सेक्टर को एड्रेस करते हुए करने का प्लान है और इसमें सभी सेक्टर्स को सभी डिपार्टमेंट्स को रखने रखते हुए कई मीटिंग्स कॉल की गई हैं और एक प्लान ऑफ एक्शंस की तैयारी पे स्टेट है एक और बड़ी स्टडी कराई गई थी जो हम लोग ने देखा अर्बन की तरफ से कि हमने जो काम किए थे उसका इफेक्ट क्या क्या पड़ा जो जो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया की स्कीम्स थी या स्टेट की स्कीम्स थी उनका इंपैक्ट इस डिजास्टर्स में क्या पड़ा 
जो प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना पे आवास गरीबों के लिए करीबन 202 सौ दो यहाँ सेंक्शन किए गए थे और उस टाइम तक 138 आवास निर्मित हो चुके थे और बाकी कंस्ट्रक्शन एरियाज में थे कंस्ट्रक्शन के के उनपे कंस्ट्रक्शन चल रहा था लेकिन एक भी 138 आवास में किसी में भी कोई भी डिजास्टर या कोई भी प्रॉब्लम नहीं आई थी वो बिल्कुल सेफ थे ये सारे आवास उन्हीं लोकल्स लोगों लोगों ने ही बनाए थे और ऐसा कोई ऐसी टेक्निक यूज नहीं की गई थी कि जो डिजास्टर प्रूफ हो लेकिन फिर भी वो आवास बचे थे तो एक स्टडी भी एक जरूरत होगी डिटेल स्टडी की ऐसा क्या था इसका मतलब है कि कुछ जॉन कुछ ऐसा प्रोन एरिया है जिसपे डिजास्टर ज्यादा है और उसकी जैसे जैसे बात हो रही थी कि जो सॉइल है या कॉन्क्रीट एरियाज है वहां पे उसकी सॉइल इतनी डिस्ट्रैक्ट हो चुकी है डिस्ट्रॉय हो चुकी है या उस पर इतनी वो लोड बेरिंग नहीं रह गई है जिसपे वो अफेक्ट कर रहा है तो वो एक, एक जो अर्बन ने स्टडी कराई थी उसका प्रूफ था करीबन फोर थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड सिक्सटी एट टॉयलेट इंडिविजुअल टॉयलेट बनाए गए थे वो भी इंडिविजुअल टॉयलेट जो सोकिट टॉयलेट थे लेकिन उसका उसका इम्पैक्ट ये था कि वो सॉइल को इम्पैक्ट कर रहे थे और वहां सॉइल एरोजन हो रहा था तो वो भी हमें नई न्यू टेक्निक्स पे जाना पड़ेगा कि जो जो एक गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया पॉलिसी फ्रेम करता है ऑल ओवर इंडिया के वो हिली एरियाज या जो इम्पैक्ट एरियाज उनके लिए वो वाइबल नहीं है उनके लिए कोई अदर टेक्निक्स पे लेके जाना पड़ेगा अदर सुकमेट एरियाज के जो जो प्लेन एरियाज की टेक्निक्स है वो वो डिजास्टर है इन एरियाज के लिए और वो उनकी रिजिलेंस को भी कम कर रही है जोशीमठ को अगर आप देखें जिस एरिया में वो स्थित है वहां पे अपनी कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटीज के लिए भी जो भी मटेरियल्स है वो सारा मटेरियल्स रुड़की से ऋषिकेश से आता है और उसकी जस्ट कॉस्ट जस्ट डबुल हो जाती है एक जो फर्स्ट क्लास ब्रिक है वो जो प्लेन एरियाज में नाइन टेन रुपीज का है वो ट्वेंटी से ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू रुपीज का आता है जोशी मठ पे पहुंचते हुए ऐसे ही लेबर कॉस्ट है जस्ट डबल कॉस्ट हो लेबर कॉस्ट होती है तो वो उस कॉस्ट को कटिंग करने के लिए ये जरूरी है कि जो लोकल मटेरियल्स हैं उनको उन उनको ज्यादा प्रमोट किया जाए और उस हेतु लोकल बिल्डिंग सेंटर्स को प्रमोट किया जाए कुछ इस तरह के लोकल बिल्डिंग सेंटर्स वहां बनाए जाए ताकि लोगों को जो वहां पे लोकल मटीरियल्स है उससे वो मकान बना सके क्योंकि उनकी प्रॉब्लम्स वो नहीं है हम उनको एडवाइस देते हैं कि आप वो यूज कीजिए लेकिन वो कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव नहीं होते हैं तो इस तरह की अगर लोकल बिल्डिंग सेंटर्स सेंटरिश होंगे जो उनके वॉल्स और रूफिंग के लिए कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव बनाए और जो वहां के लोकल मटेरियल्स पे हो तो और वो इन्वायरमेंट फ्रेंडली हो तो नेचुरल है कि वो कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव आएगा लोग उसको यूज करेंगे और जो फर्दर डिजास्टर्स होंगे उनसे हम बच सकेंगे कम्युनिटी uh, को अगर हम एड्रेस करें तो वहां पे uh, जैसा मैंने कहा ट्वेंटी थ्री थाउजेंड के आसपास लोग हैं पर ईयर टेन टू ट्वेल्व लैक्स के यात्री आते हैं uh, और वो बद्रीनाथ जी का जंक्शन है बद्रीनाथ जी का एक लास्ट स्टेशन है बद्रीनाथ जी जाने के लिए और हेमकुट साहब जाने के लिए लोग वहां पे स्टे करते हैं तो नंबर ऑफ होटल्स मोटल्स और हाउसेस पे जो पहले लोगों के पास एग्रीकल्चर लैंड था उस पर बन चुके हैं जैसे मैंने पहले भी कहा कि कोई भी लैंड बायलॉज या लैंड मैपिंग की अभी भी कोई भी वहां पे कोई स्टेट स्पेसिफिक उनसे लिया नहीं जाता था अर्बन प्लानिंग का कोई टाउन प्लानिंग का कोई वहां पे अप्रूवल नहीं था जिसके कारण अनप्लान पूरा सिटी डेवलप्ड हुआ है जिसके कारण से नेचुरल है वो कई चीजें है एस बने हैं दो एस टी वहां पे हैं 2.08 और 1.08 के लेकिन वो काफी बाद में बने उनकी वजह से भी शायद वो एक स्टडी होगी कि उसमें उस, उसका भी इफेक्ट कितना पड़ा है तो नंबर ऑफ प्लेग्रम्स पे ही जो वहां की अर्थव्यवस्था है वो बेस है क्योंकि एग्रीकल्चर एस सच नहीं है और जो रेवेन्यू अर्न होता है वो करीबन पर ईयर हंड्रेड करोड़ से ज्यादा अर्न करते हैं वहां पे लोग इस डिजास्टर में आ, उसका इफेक्ट यह हुआ है कि आ, जब नंबर्स ऑफ होटल्स मोटल्स को आ, गिराने को या आ, स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ने उसको बैन कर दिया था तो नंबर्स ऑफ पर्सन को वो 
वहां से पलायन किए हैं नीचे को आए हैं तो ऑलरेडी जो स्टेट का हिली एरियाज का पलायन है वो बहुत ज्यादा है और इस डिजास्टर्स की वजह से जो प्लेन एरियाज है उनमें 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 भार बढ़ रहा है और जो हमारे ऊपर हिली एरियाज है वो खाली हो रहे हैं तो कम्युनिटीज को कहीं से बिल्ड करने के लिए अगर आप उनको नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव संसाधन नहीं देते हैं तो वो वहां पे इसी तरह के स्ट्रक्चर्स बनते रहेंगे और फिर डिजास्टर्स की प्रॉब्लम्स रहेंगी दूसरी प्रॉब्लम्स है मैसन्स जो वहां पे काम कर रहे हैं अभी उनको कोई भी नॉलेज इस तरह की वहां पे अभी नहीं है कि जो सस्पेक्ट सेफ डिजाइन पे कुछ काम करें या जो कंस्ट्रक्शन है उस पर किस तरह काम किया जाए तो इस पर भी ये डिजायर्ड है कि स्किल सेंटर्स वहां पे डेवलप किया जाए ताकि ऑलरेडी जो वहां लोग स्किल कर रहे हैं क्योंकि वहां का जो क्लाइमेट है वो वो जो वहां पे लोग रह रहे हैं वो ही उसी को उसको सह सकते हैं बाहर वालों को आप उनको लाके वहाँ जो स्किल्ड है उनको लाके वहां नहीं करा सकते तो लोकल ही जो वहाँ कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटीज में काम कर रहे हैं उन्हीं को उस सेंटर्स पे स्किल किया जाए ताकि वो टेक्निक्स को यूज कर सके एक और स्टेट ने पोस्ट डिजास्टर नीड असेसमेंट कराया था कि कितना क्या क्या रहा वो एक बहुत बड़ी रिपोर्ट है जिसमें कवर किए गए थे कई इश्यूज कवर किए गए थे एक तो असेसमेंट किया था और हाउसिंग का पूरा क्या इफेक्ट पड़ा है और उनका रिसेटलमेंट कैसे किया जाए ये ये और उसकी टोकोलॉजी क्या होगी बिल्डिंग मटेरियल्स कैसे यूज किए जाएंगे डेमेन एनालिसिस की गई थी तो वो एक बहुत बड़ी रिपोर्ट सबमिट की गई सबमिट हुई है जिसमें उसका बहुत एनालिसिस किया गया है जो हाउसिंग के अलावा हेल्थ एजुकेशन पब्लिक बिल्डिंग टूरिज्म वाटर एंड सैनिटेशन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डिजास्टर रिस्क रिडक्शन इन्वायरमेंट पे बेस्ड है जिसपे इसके अलग अलग सेक्टर्स में है आ, ये आ, ये अगर इंस्टीट्यूट को आवश्यकता होगी तो मैं आपको ये रिपोर्ट दे सकता हूँ आप स्टडी करने के लिए आ, ये एक अच्छा टूल हो सकता है आ, तो ये सारी चीजें होंगी जो एक 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 टाइम फ्रेम पे अगर हम इसको करेंगे तो नेचुरल है कि जो डिजास्टर्स है और टाउन्स में आनी है जो इमीडिएट हमें सॉल्यूशंस लेने हैं उससे हम कुछ बचाव कर सकेंगे थैंक यू थैंक यू सर सर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन योर सर आपने अभी जो बात कही है कि है ना वहाँ पे ऐसे कुछ मटेरियल्स यूज होने चाहिए जहाँ से एक्चुअली द एरिया इज वेरी सेंसिटिव एंड तो हमें कुछ ऐसे मटेरियल्स यूज करने चाहिए जहाँ पे इट इज वेरी लाइट एंड इट इज वेरी इट हैज अ वेरी लो पेनिट्रेशन पावर एंड इट वेर द सीपेज ऑफ वाटर इज वेरी लेस एंड ऑल्सो इट रिड्यूस मोर देन फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द पेनिट्रेशन ऑफ वाटर सो अभी जो मार्केट में जो अभी आ रहे हैं इसमें है फ्लाई एश ब्रिक्स जो है विच इज विच इज द मेन कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द फ्लाई एश ब्रिक इज एश लाइन जिप्सम एंड सैंड एंड विच इज विच शुड ऑल्सो बी अवेलेबल रेडिली इन द हिमालयन जो सो इज दिस मटेरियल अभी यूज हो रहे हैं वहां पे बहुत कम यूज हो रहे हैं मैम बेसिकली क्या है ना एक और एक्सेप्टेबिलिटी की बात होती है कि वो कम्युनिटी उसको एक्सेप्ट कर रही है कि नहीं कर रही है वो okay. वो अभी नहीं आई है वो अभी एक लोगों जो थॉट है ना वो अभी वही है कि ब्रिक्स से बड़े स्ट्रॉन्ग बनेंगे तो ये वाले ब्रिक्स हैं वहां पे लेकिन यूज बहुत कम हो रहे हैं ये हमारे जो पीएमए वाई हाउसेज भी बने हैं उसमें मेरे ख्याल में टेन परसेंट हाउसेज इसके इस टेक्निक से यूज हुए तो आर पीपल तो यहाँ पे वो अवेयरनेस नहीं है या एक्सेप्टेंस नहीं है तो व्हाट इज द मेन रीजन बिहाइंड दोनों चीज नहीं है मैम कुछ को पता नहीं है और कुछ को आ, कुछ एक्सेप्ट नहीं कर रहे सो एनी मेजर्स दैट कैन बी टेकन फॉर दिस लाइक टू प्रमोट दीज काइंड्स ऑफ मटेरियल्स एंड टू प्रमोट दीज काइंड्स ऑफ ब्रिक्स इन द मार्केट गवर्नमेंट ने कुछ गवर्नमेंट ने कुछ स्टेप्स लिए हैं रिगार्डिंग दिस 
नहीं हम लोग ने अभी एनडीए जो हमारा डीएमएमसी है डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट सेंटर है उसके माध्यम से वहां पे कुछ वर्कशॉप्स कराई हैं जिसमें हमने लोकल मशीन और जो जो लोकल जो हाउसेस जो कंस्ट्रक्टर रहे थे उनको इस टेक्निक से के बारे में बताया और एक एक मॉडल बना के वहां दिया कि ये एक मॉडल बना हुआ है आप इसको जाके देखें और इसकी जो स्ट्रेंथ है वो जो आप जो ब्रिक यूज कर रहे हैं उसी के बराबर है तो वो दो वर्कशॉप हमने वहां पे डिजास्टर के बाद कराई है ओके सर बट वहां पे जो प्लानिंग होती है इट इज मेनली डन बाय द आर्किटेक्चर ओवर देयर राइट फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट डिपार्टमेंट तो तो ये uh, इतनी आसानी से एक्सेप्टेंस एक्सेप्टेबल uh, होने में कितना टाइम लग जाएगा मतलब uh, ताकि आगे जो भी जितने भी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर uh, वहां पे बने वो काफी रेसिस्टेंट हो ऑन दैड परस्पेक्टिव एंड उनकी लॉन्जिटिविटी बहुत ज्यादा हो मैम जैसे आपने कहा ना जो गवर्नमेंट बिल्डिंग्स हैं उनमें तो हो सकता है लेकिन इंडिविजुअल्स के जो कंस्ट्रक्शन हो रहे हैं आप होटल्स मोटल्स बन रहे हैं उस पर तो जब थोड़ी सी अवेयर आएगी दो चार कंस्ट्रक्शन बनेंगे उनको वो लगेगा कि ठीक है वो कम्पेटिवली कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव है तो नेचुरल है तब लोग फॉलो करेंगे ओके ओके सर सो दिस विल स्टिल टेक टाइम अनदर फाइव इयर्स सेवन इयर्स टेन इयर्स ओके थैंक यू सो मच सर आई आई वुड आल्सो मेंशन सर ओके अजय नायर सर प्लीज या अजय सर प्लीज आस्क यू टू रेस्ट ओके ओके हेलो थैंक यू कैन यू हियर मी यस यस uh okay uh, i was probably a little late on to the session but i was listening to uh, mr pandey uh, sangal pandey actually uh, my question is uh, basically you no know, in in transportation problem we normally have a classic statement saying that uh, the problem should not occur that is not supposed to occur because you made some mistake in the beginning itself actually so if you take the same concept to the disaster in the hilly area uh, i am coming from a recent incident in kerala wynad uh, almost 400 people died during that landslide actually and we try to investigate why that situation happened actually basically what we found is uh, people have been constructing on sites unauthorized constructions unplanned constructions without permits uh in, including quarry you know for uh, digging sand and uh, uh, rock materials for construction purpose without permit actually so the root cause if you analyze on all this situation there are sensitivities around this hilly region where you are not supposed to do any construction actually you are supposed to do only conservation activities actually so it is basically uh, there are some root causes where there is violation but then there are other areas where the entire natural ecosystem needs to be properly uh, nurtured actually it's not that nature will recoup by itself like nature has got its own uh, process uh, rejuvenation process it has got its own uh, denudation process which is erosional process but if you don't care about it those process to evolve on a natural progressive scale then nature also will fail we are including this manual process manual you know what you call incursions into the natural process which will accelerate the process of you know uh, you know landslides and those kind of things so what is what is your you know opinion regarding control systems like the government is failing that's what i am telling i do not know whether you belong to the government department but i am saying government is failing from all the sides sir you are absolutely right sir Uh, this is failure of the government. We accept that because a lot of a uh, lot of encroachment is there everywhere where there is a disaster. Because what uh, the study which uh, which was done after the, uh, this disaster, it is shown that the the most uh, thing uh, that the houses or the motels were uh, constructed under uh, and uh, were constructed in hazardous areas. Mm, yeah. and another things uh, what uh, what i have already mentioned that uh, there is a uh, the, there is a uh, the building material uh, the, that uh, there is a no 
uh, at present building bylaws exist but residential buildings uh, by uh, bylaws uh, for for individual there is no laws to follow the uh, bylaws uh, individual uh, residence building bylaws so government is going to uh, going to for, uh, uh, to regulate that मैं पंडित साहब मैं जो बोल रहा था तो बिल्डिंग मटेरियल का कंस्ट्रक्शन टेक्नोलॉजी का जो भी बात है वो सेकेंडरी है मैं जो yes. बोल रहा हूँ कहा जो बिल्डिंग बना रहा है वो तो वो तो एक एक तो प्लान होना चाहिए कहाँ रोड बनाना है उसका एक प्लान होना चाहिए तो वहां फेल हो रहा है इसलिए तो इसलिए इसलिए तो इतना सारा नुकसान हो रहा है तो उसको उसको आप क्या करेंगे वो गवर्नमेंट तो करते नहीं वो कहाँ पे भी जो डेवलप करेगा उसको इनकरेज कर रहा है टूरिज्म के लिए तो, हिली रीजन में टूरिज्म के लिए इतना सारा डेवलपमेंट कर रहा है उसका कोई कंट्रोल नहीं है तो अगले साल भी यही होगा नो रिपीटेडली हो रहा है केरला में भी मेरा मैं देख रहा था ट्वेंटी ईयर्स से मैं डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट रिलेटेड एक्टिविटीज देख रहा यू आर एक्चुअली वेरी फाउंड ऑफ नो डिजास्टर रिकवरी डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट कोई नेशनल बॉडीज भी है स्टेट बॉडीज भी है पैसा पैसा डालते रहता है डिजास्टर रिकवरी दैट इज एक्चुअली ए पोस्ट इवेंट एक्टिविटी एक्चुअली इट यू आर नॉट सपोज टू पुट मनी ऑन पोस्ट इवेंट एक्टिविटी ऑन रिकवरी ऑन मेडिकल सप्लाइज दैट इज एक्चुअली वेस्ट ऑफ मनी यू शुड एक्चुअली थिंक ऑफ हाउ टू पुट मनी इन टू प्लानिंग डिपार्टमेंट which will enforce enforce this planning regulatory activities on hilly region actually so that you don't construct any road any uh, uh, tourist uh, facilities on those sensitive location actually that is a preventive measure that is where you are failing that's my feeling actually i am a planner i have been working uh, with uh, external agencies in the us and many other countries i worked very closely with uh, epa in usa for almost 11 12 years actually so i know all this topic very closely i see the the planning agencies are the the real culprit they should be punished actually that's what i feel the planning department staff in these states has to be punished first heavily uh, uh sir what you are saying you are absolutely you. right thank you sir and uh, i think very good point you have mentioned and first i really thanks from a core of my heart that you have shared three of you have shared very highlighted very important issues so first i will request to uh, say few words on the uh, anupam sir anupam sir you have mentioned about the comprehensive development plan and then i will come to the uh, shailesh sir because shailesh sir you are also uh, since a long have you have experience in the pmptc technology sector in the building material sectors so what about the discussions we had because mountain side is a very fragile zone and we are looking forward for the and there is a always a dilemma is exist in case of the environmental degradation as well as the economic development so we have to focus and ultimately most of the cases the both are not going in the same way and the people life wealth property everything is now moving in a destructive phase so i would request to highlight in light some points to anupam sir what should be the comprehensive model according to you i mean where people coexist mountain coexist and the economic sustainability improve uh, development will also coexist thank you dr chaudhary yeah, i was listening all uh, this thing and the what uh, professor nayar is telling about and then uh, the lady who asked about the fly ash breaks and all i do not know means uh, who means uh, okay this is a waste product and we like to utilize it and we find it that okay bricks making is the best solution for this and uh, this is how we'll get out of this uh, menace and then utilize it in some manner but uh, i am uh, means not directly but indirectly for some reason i am involved in this and then before uh, going into and finding a solution somebody has done the um, uh, compositional studies of this that uh, if we put this for building material what will come out if if that we start uh, leaching 
okay so that is one concern and secondly what we are doing we are making breaks and that is as a geologist i find uh, people don't know and don't uh, give care also that uh, soil is our and particularly in this part of the region in ganga plain and all we uh, have the best soil in the entire world and we are making bricks out of it you know that uh, it takes one million years to make one meter of soil and for many reasons whether it is road whether it is dam whether it is building whether it is bricks and wherever we are using our best soil which is not available in the entire world in that that much amount and uh, we are basically uh, wasting uh, our resource like that if i say that okay you whatever cost we are getting 10 15 rupees one break if i give you a rock and then ask you to convert it to soil then you will find it out that uh, how much money it will take it is like a gold uh, mining so uh, wasting these resources in this kind of why don't you use the bedlands where uh, they, they, it, it has already leased all these nutrient elements we have uh, enormous of laterite we have enormous of bedlands available use that so there are multiple things similarly but in my uh, that point i made that uh, this population because whenever we, it is a very very complex things uh, if you increase the number then you have to give food you have to give water you cannot deny and when you cannot deny then what is the options left with you you have to give dwelling, you have to give food, you have to energy water, you have to give electricity. Otherwise, I will say that uh, all deprived, what kind of situation we are living in. I am not uh, getting all those resources what others are getting. So increasing or multiplying uh, our number like anything and we are now the topmost in the world. And we are not even taking any steps out of it. And secondly, just to get a more GDP, more economic this, but at what cost? So one place is suffering like this, another place is uh, having uh, repercussions of other things. So it's a complex things, and we have to think really very seriously. Otherwise, it is difficult. Other uh, because. Uh, lot of things uh, means uh, what i mentioned in my uh, brief uh, talk also that uh, thing was known right from last 50 years that which are the areas what is the problem how to tackle it is the building code is not available in india it is there how to build but who is following if we are not able to comply or the enforcement department is not ready to look into it. I don't want to go deep into it because uh, everyone knows that who, what is and what behind it. Okay, so the problem everyone knows, or like I would say that uh, if everyone does not know, many people know. That is why I, in concluding things, I said that reports are there, observations are there, notices are given, but unless until go for agitation and unless until the things has reached to that level, then only the eyes or the concerned uh, people uh, say, otherwise they try to somehow downplay everything. So basically, right, right. sensitization is most important. If you sensitize people, they learn what is what and uh, come up with their own small uh, personal benefits. I think uh, things uh, can be changed. So, right, sir. So, I uh, very rightly said, and uh, I think, sir, uh, Shale, sir, you know that technology is one of the major part right now, and especially the geospatial technology. BIM technology is coming into the front and government has in uh, uh, drone in his hand. So uh, wait, I don't know whether such kind of technology can also be the part of that uh, monitoring, measuring other entity, even uh, because I, I would like to mention also to Pande sir that SIA from its very beginning as it is working on the different climate change and uh, sustainability related issues. And then I have also mentioned that we have developed the uh, Himalayan Climate Consortium to address the Himalayan uh, related issues. But in all aspects, uh, we use the geospatial technology and that is in a more uh, application based way. 
because we are associated with the several government of India and uh, organizations like NATMO, like Survey of India, and we are collecting uh, even from the enactment of the National Geospatial Policy in 2022. We are since 2028, 18. We are conducting the applying the GIS not only to develop the knowledge based ecosystem but also the skill based ecosystem. So now we are experimenting GIS and already we get got some little bit succeed. And Shainesh, sir, I think you know that you are also associated since the beginning of SIAR that we are applying GIS from the map making section, map making platform to the decision making platform. We have generated several policy reports submitted to the central state government officials. And after that, they are getting uh, excited to know that how GIS has become a platform where decision making can also be done. We did several projects. We did several. We did several policy reports in case of the heat island mapping, in case of the forest resource mapping, in case of the built uh, build up changes, uh, in case of the water bodies, groundwater potentiality. And recently, we are also started another initiative. In case of the mountain, uh, we did one project under my supervision. One student was did that project from uh, Pune University, Savitri Bai Pune University. That is the hill cities resilience, where we have mapped on three hill cities, taken three hill cities, Darjeeling, Kalimpong, and sorry, Kashyam and the Gangtok, and we showcased them how last 30 years, in the three decades, the landscape has changed, build up area has changed, forest cover has reduced water body sectors has changed and uh, how the heat island has been uh, developed in several parts of the world. So whether that kind of technology can be used and together uh, with Shailesh Sir Department, with Anupam Sir Department, with Pandey Sir Department, with Sire can also create some consortium to support the people of the Uttarakhand or the Joshi Mod, either the gang or wherever the Hili people because they are in the most vulnerable situation in this case. So I, I would like to uh, get some inputs from Shailesh sir and also his guidance. Okay. Thank okay. you, sir. I think uh, it's a wonderful workshop and I uh, uh, heard all the experts also. And I think Paneji has covered everything. I, I think he has touched upon exactly. uh, all the aspects which are uh, which need to be looked into. And I mean, I mean first, let, let me answer your questions. Yes, technology in every... Uh, uh, field technology is the main thing. Technology transition is need of the hour. It is call of the day. And uh, uh, let me tell you that government of India has already started. You know, we are trying to create uh, twin virtual twin models. Like we have a building information modeling uh, where we create a virtual model of a building. It is called BIM, building information modeling. In a similar way, uh, the 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 twin virtual twin models of cities of India are being created. So. Uh, as you said, geospatial technologies, uh, GIS, all these things are going to play a very important role. Like I, I'm a civil engineer. I come, uh, you know, I deal with housing. In housing, Internet of Things have taken uh, a big leap. Well, nowadays, we are talking about Internet of Things in uh, construction. So uh, all these things will definitely help uh, in, uh, you know, uh, uh, will be a step, proactive measure uh, towards uh, disaster risk reduction. Okay, uh, let me also tell you here, uh, I will. I was listening to everyone. Uh, see, first of all, whenever it is, see, basically, India is a country and we all by nature are reactive people. We react once the disaster comes, you know, the, we should be proactive instead of reactive, despite of, despite of having disaster management plan, disaster, disaster management act, we have building bylaws, town country planning act, we have model building bylaws, we have a whole lot of literature. I think Anupam was telling about codes. We have comprehensive code. You will not find anywhere in the world that kind of comprehensive code on disasters. We have code on landslides, we have code on subsidence, earthquakes, everything. But we always react to the disaster. So yes. we have to we have to bring that proactiveness okay and that is why you know we have just brought out a document you know as engineers we follow national building code so we have given in that and i would like to tell all of you here that whenever you do any project related to buildings or infrastructure keep in mind these five things and that is in that order first is safety safety functionality sustainability 
economy and aesthetics. First, three should not be compromised. First thing is safety. When we talk about safety, we are talking about geoclimatic condition and all those things. And like Ajay and Mr. Nair was telling, climate, climate change, you know, in Vainat, it was 1.8 meter in La when the, uh, you know, it was rainfall uh, triggered landslide. There was around two meter rainfall in the last 30 days, which triggered uh, when I say, of course, all those things are there, encroachment and all those things, but extreme events. So we have to do with uh, something with climate change. And for that, Government of India is already uh, coming out with a code. Uh, you know, we are coming out with a code called uh, Energy Conservation and Sustainability, Sustainable Building Code, where we are talking about local materials, local technologies, less greenhouse gas emission. As you know, uh, Dr. Chaudhary, uh, Government of India has already started, uh, you know, uh, making use of uh, innovative new technologies. In fact, after Joshimat, I was also asked, uh, do we have some good technologies which can help uh, build better structures uh, in um, Uttarakhand or in Joshimat? Yes, we do have technologies. There are lightweight technologies available. And as I told, told you, I think uh, uh, Varsha was telling about look, a whole lot of local technologies are available. You have. Uh, stone in abundance that a stone can be converted into a stone masonry block then we can just we can make a seismically safe uh, structure there but setting you know uh, geological setting is also very important and if i need to tell you there was a report submitted you know if you go through Panaji was telling you about the report which was submitted by five institutions cbra wadi institute and other institutions ndm and all you just go, see in that report 1976 a report was submitted that uh, 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 joshimat uh, th there is a risk to land uh, subsidence 1976 okay so the, and there is a history of creeping and uh, occasional subsidence in the region so uh, all of us know whether you talk about uh, calcutta you talk about delhi everywhere we are encroaching the inhabited uh, land that should be avoided like in Mr. Pandey talked about PMI houses. In PMI houses, we don't sanction house unless uh, you put in place disaster risk measures. So we, uh, you know, we conduct the site survey. We do uh, the handholding of, uh, uh, you know, beneficiaries, including artisans, so that if you are in zone, uh, Uttarakhand is in zone five, upper reaches of Himalayas are in zone five. So you need to build, uh, keeping in mind those seismic uh, risk, uh, risk measures. Also, you know. To, then another thing I want to uh, tell you is, which is very important, is drainage. Okay, so if you uh, go into the report of uh, this uh, Joshimat, they have clearly uh, you know written that we need to channelize the drains to reduce seepage. Let me repeat: you have to channelize the uh, drains to reduce seepage. What is happening nowadays? You, we are just building a structure thereby blocking the natural drainage channels. And that is why you find urban flooding is a recent phenomenon, isn't it? Every city is flooded during um, rainy days because, first of all, we have extreme weather events, rain for all of a sudden. Uh, within a few hours, you will have a rainfall of a month. OK, and then we are uh, you know, not allowing that water to drain naturally because we have just blocked, we have created structures in the path of natural drainage okay and that is why clearly see you, you understand so suppose you are you, you you have a city on a mountain and you are filling it with water so what happens soil becomes saturated and once soil becomes saturated it loses its bearing capacity so you have to uh, you know uh, think of uh, drainage uh, channels also uh, also nair sabha said very rightly you know I was approached when you know the, the road network around the Himalayas. You know, you, we have to give proper thinking. We have to plan from where the road is to be taken. Are we cutting the slopes? Uh, are we making those slopes vulnerable? So all those things are to be looked in in totality. And as you said, uh, Dr. Chaudhary, the, the the new technologies, which, the knowledge we have. See, the, I am always uh, confronted that our ancestors did that, did that. Of course, they did good thing, but the kind of knowledge we have today, the kind of tools we have today, uh, I told you in the beginning, we need to create synergy, what we learned from our ancestors and what we have now. So um, as you said, uh, I mean, the entire Himalaya can be geo-mapped and we can actually, uh, you know, uh, 
mark these risk areas, high risk areas, where to build, what to build, where not to build, and if is, uh, something is to be built in high risk areas, what is to be done, what are the measures uh, uh, which can be taken. So all these things are possible. Uh, one thing is we have to uh, you know, be proactive. We have to look uh, at disaster you know, in a proactive, in a professional manner and uh, think about those things. Last, I will, uh, you know, uh, on a very uh, you know, light note, let me tell you, there's a book uh, uh, by um, Englishman uh, Robert P, uh, which is on human response to earthquakes. Okay. And what that book says, if an earthquake strikes, if an earthquake strikes, uh, uh, it's a 10 year cycle. Okay. So if earthquake strikes, we start, you know, thinking there will be a lot of uh, sessions on TV, on social media, and uh, um, as a layman or as a citizen of India, we will think, oh, wow, 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 now we are in safe hands. Okay. And within one year, we will have short term measures, long term measures. By within three and fourth year, we forget. And we start waiting for another event to come, another disaster to come. So it's a 10 year cycle. We forget the, the, the event and we just uh, wait for another event to happen so that we start again. So, and it happens everywhere. So that should be uh, you know, avoided. And uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Sir, I think uh, the questions, uh, uh, the insights that you added about each and every parameter um, about Joshi Mutt, I think that covered almost everything that is supposed to be done. But there are a number of things we, which are uh, yet to be done. Starting with, um, we were researching about Joshi Mutt and uh, through uh, GIS and through DEM, uh, like the elevation models of uh, the, um, the profiles of the mountainous profile, we were trying to understand if we could relocate the um, municipality area of Joshimat to a near to, to a nearby uh, region, maybe Auli. Like Auli is a place very near to Joshimat. It's like nine kilometers away from Joshimat. Uh, we are keeping into uh, account that uh, Joshimat is an important place for uh, the tourism uh, tourism and the religion part uh, for the locals and also their livelihood so uh, can we think about anything like relocation of uh, the people of joshimat because uh, i think uh, anupam sir will uh, agree with me uh, many of the research and many such studies they suggest that joshimat uh, it is built on an existing uh, landslide which had happened maybe long, long years ago. As you mentioned, in 1976, a report came out. So uh, Joshimat actually doesn't have any, it is not appropriate for uh, having to uh, to be able to support such a big area, such a big population, and such uh, big anthropogenic activities. So do you think that um, relocation could be a solution to that? If you want me to answer, see, uh... You, you are a young person, so it is easier said than done. Okay, that is the answer to you. Secondly, I think the strategy is there. Uh, you know, when we are we were trying to build uh, Joshimut, uh, so we we realized that that, that where land subsidence occurred, we wanted to shift the people. They simply refused. We wanted to give them better house. So there are a whole lot of issues. You know, it's it it's it's not easy. Uh, in fact, I can tell you there are examples in Uttarakhand where the whole town was. You, you think of uh, why not? All of them are, right. you know, this, they don't just move. So you are right on your place. So it is. It should be done, but but like there's a, there's resistance from the locals as well. Like, I guess. Democratic country. So these kind right. of things. But citing is very. See, we all know citing. You know, is very important. Even then, we continue to build on flood plains. We continue to build uh, on exactly, water. Yeah. Okay, so yes, you, you have made a valid point, but I don't think because I gave you the example: hundred, um, you know, dwelling units we wanted to build in uh, some much safer area, few kilometers away from right. uh, that place. But people don't move; they have emotional, uh, a whole kind of things. Uh, you know, with that. Right. 
they have their ancestry areas and like the connection to the yes state. but as professionals and as dr chaudhary said our job is to let let do the risk mapping tell that this area is lying in a danger zone or it's a high risk zone and something is done here then it may lead to disaster so those yeah. things we continue to do and submit it to the government and municipalities local bodies and then it is up to them to you know take further actions on that Totally. Uh, Pandey, sir, are you here? Uh, Rajiv, sir, are you here? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, actually, uh, I would like to mention, uh, share two announcements here, because uh, as I mentioned, that is the we have developed a Himalayan Climate Consortium. We have made it. So, on that basis, we have the first Himalayan Climate Dialogue. We have organized a plan. And we have planned it in Uttarakhand. Uh, Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology से बात हुआ है फकर जी आज नहीं ज्वाइन कर पाए फ्लाइट में है इसीलिए वो पहले ही बताए थे uh, अगर उनका फ्लाइट रहेगा तो मेबी ही नॉट बी एबल टू ज्वाइन बट वी आर प्लानिंग टू ऑर्गेनाइज द डायलॉग आई थॉट दैट देयर शुड बी अ डायलॉग ऑन द हिमालयन क्लाइमेट रेजिलिएंस टू हाईलाइट द एड्रेस द हिमालयन इश्यूज और वो हम शुरू करने की प्लान किए हैं उत्तराखंड में एंड आई विल बी थ्रू दैट प्लेटफार्म आई विल आल्सो रिक्वेस्ट यू टू uh, इसको आप भी सपोर्ट कीजिए उत्तराखंड गवर्नमेंट से भी हम जुड़े हैं uh, मेरे एकेडमिक करियर से भी मैं जुड़ा हूं इवन आपका जो पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल बोर्ड के अभी चेयरमैन थे तो ढाकर सर सो ही इज आल्सो नोन टू मी एनीवे बट रमेश पोखरियाल जी ही इज आल्सो नोन टू मी ही पर्सनली हैज जॉइंड इन माय इवेंट्स इन लास्ट टू ट्वाइस एंड थ्राइस सो आई विल बी हैप्पी इफ उत्तराखंड गवर्नमेंट विल बी द पार्ट ऑफ दैट सेशन और प्रोग्राम नंबर 1 Number two, I also request you. Uh, I don't know whether you have or not. As we already applied the geospatial technology and give some uh, evidence-based research, and also like uh, some senior officials. I mean, from Mr. Rajiv Ranjan, Mr. the former IAS DG, who has uh, expended uh, spending their his 34 years IAS career, particularly in the urban and water sector management sector, and several some officials. I am also blessed to uh, have Dr. Silas sir because from very beginning I got his guidance uh, about any kind of activities and all that. So together we would like to uh, do something for Uttarakhand because it's not maybe it's not my state but I also feel that it's my uh, state too. And I will also and whatever the research and policy advocacy evidence based research we are doing in case of the. Uh, as a sample research in case of Darjeeling, Kalimpong, I will share to you definitely. And I hope if your urban authority will also take initiative. And as I mentioned, we are the non profit RD organization. So we are actually working on the non profit, no loss basis. So if we, it is possible to work together, then I can also try to bring some other officials, those who are from the different sectors. I mean, like Arubam sir, Shailesh sir is their expertise in their own level. And there should be a um, subcommittee can be developed. That is just a humble suggestion. It's not that uh, you have to take. But uh, we can propose. If you suggest that we can propose to you. And that basis, you may And we are ready to support your state. Even my third announcement is that on behalf of Syed, Ankit, who is actually uh, today's his moderator today, and our, our another scientist, Mr. Shantanu Shaman, the, and we uh, together taken an initiative to uh, design a framework for the Joshi Mod sector on Joshi Mod. So, what okay. would be the climate resilience model could be applied in case of Joshi Mod, and that model maybe could be applied where we incorporate each and every sector. I mean, from the building materials to the uh, energy, how we could be utilized. So, these are the initiative. I would be very happy. If your government will also associate and we will be support, easy, we will be happy to support. And also, I hope that Anupam sir, Shailesh sir, along with that, some other persons, those who are working on that field on the different domain, because it's not the part of myself or yourself individually. It is the part of uh, a composition of the like-minded people, those who can work. So we will be happy to support your state, sir. Anyway, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, definitely, state government will be uh, will be very happy uh, uh, in collaborating with you and working with you. Definitely, you are welcome here at Uttarakhand. Thank you, thank you. So, I think uh, if you have any queries and 
अमृता सुभाष जी और सर आई गेस वी हैव अ क्वेश्चन इन आर चैट बॉक्स बाय आर फेलो अटेंडी सो द क्वेश्चन इज टू टू मिस्टर पांडे द अटेंडीज अटेंडीज आस्किंग that uh, sir you talked about heavy flow of tourists every year sir what is your thought whether or not it is possible to bring measures for controlling the annual flow of tourists so that it can also have control upon rapid hotel building in the area so what are your thoughts on this uh nahi the government is already thinking about that uh first uh, the the government was thinking to restrict the uh, the number of tourists but it was opposed by uh, opposition also from the uh, concerned local leaders and the industrial uh, uh, industrial persons uh so now they are th- uh, thinking that uh, what you have said that some some uh, local place would be developed near oli or somewhere uh, else which is not far away from the jushima so government is definitely thinking on the direction but it is not possible to restrict the number of and of the player games to come to uh, charham uh, area right uh, thank I you sir anki that that is, that is right because it's not so easy to you can say stop you you should not come or uh, that is the part but we have to think in that the tourist is not our problem for what i believe the tourist is not our problem responsible tourism is our problem responsible tourism and responsible tourist is our problem even sir uh, as ankit has mentioned in our tourism sector recent last year i was a lecture in uh, kathmandu organized by the nepal tourism board government of nepal there i have uh, shared them one model that is the as a think tank we are actually supposed to develop some models as well so tourism sustainable tourism model we have been designed and obviously incorporating the geospatial technology part and how tourists can be managed through uh, in case of uh, nepal and they are facing the same problem in some areas in areas how to manage that tourist etc in a sustainable way so we have this shared that too so hopefully whenever we will sit together on the table we will definitely uh, um, expose our weapons <laughs> how which could be helpful for your state definitely and uh, but really it's really really thanks to all of you i got several knowledges and special thanks to anupam sir also mentioning about the comprehensive uh, model shailesh sir shailesh sir has a long term experience in his field in case of that i think varsha ma'am would like to say something varsha ma'am quickly please ask and after that we will go for a validity session ma'am are you here okay yes sir so sorry it was on mute i'm so sorry uh sir after knowing the geology of this particular area is it possible to make the changes related to the infrastructure of the topology or topography of this area i mean knowing that it is a fault zone so can we avoid can we bring changes with the topo- uh, topography of the area your question is to uh so uh, it is uh, i mean let me uh, ask, all... ask it's yes, not sir. possible topography topography is something which cannot be changed so <laughs> you have to you know uh, when we talk about uh, you know building in sync with nature so we take advantage of the topography nature has given us everything so let's make best use of that topography based on geological setting you have to do the demarcation where to build where not to build if the slope is unstable you have to stabilize the slope but changing yeah, we can work on the stabilizing of the slope yes stabilizing is topography is something related with ground slope and all okay yes, so sir. i i always i am a big promoter of make make use of the topography as it is if it is a sloping ground make your building in uh, in slope okay no, no, they, this is a high uh, a high risk zone i mean it is the topography, uh, topography uh, topography uh-huh. of mountain cannot be changed okay you can stabilize but if it is such a big mountain and uh, sitting on a big landslide uh, unstable landslide so even slope stabilization for 
that that volume that volume is uh, oh, not wise okay no no my uh, my concern was regarding like can we uh, make it uh, more stable um, with our activities like since we are so uh, technologically we are getting into advancement so we can make it stable or not uh, like everything uh, this is was possible. my question everything is possible uh, in today's world but uh, the thing is against feasibility uh, and whole lot of there it's not that you and me deciding that there are social i like Paneji was telling social, local sentiments, local authority, state government, local urban body, and then uh, central government. So there are a whole lot of stakeholders, and uh, things are possible. Uh, slopes are being stabilized. People are being relocated, rehabilitated. Those kind of things are being done. Uh, and as I told you, you know, you if you give the drainage safest safe path, everything is solved. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to request Antara uh, to give vote of thanks. And once again, on behalf of myself, I am very much thankful to all of you uh, for being joined us. And hopefully in coming days, we will have some concrete way, not only through this virtual discussion time, but obviously through that virtual discussion, we will get some idea and we will uh, connect it in a single black and white paper. And we'll share to all of you about the outcomes of that today's discussion. And secondly, uh, as I mentioned, that this is the part of Uttarakhand. So, as an authority of Uttarakhand, I request to Panditji to have collaborate with us, and we'll be happy to support uh, his stay. Thank you. Over to you, Antara. Thank you, Dr. Chaudhary. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so, as we come to near about the end of our session. On behalf of Sayyid, I express our heartfelt gratitude to all the esteemed speakers and participants who have made this webinar a grand success. We are immensely grateful to our guest of honor, Dr. Shailesh Kumar Agarwal, Executive Director of BMTPC, for his valuable insights on urban planning and infrastructure resilience. We are privileged to welcome Dr. Anupam Sharma, Scientist G, at the Birbal Sahani Institute of Paleo Sciences as he imparts his knowledge in a plenary lecture that will enhance our comprehension of the challenges posed by both natural and anthropogenic, anthropogenic factors in the context of Himalaya urbanization, as well as the future pathways to address them. Finally, a sincere appreciation goes to Mr. Rajiv Pandey, Honorable Speaker and Project Officer at the Uttarakhand Urban Development Directorate for his practical perspective on the urban challenges faced in the region. In conclusion, I'd like to extend special thanks to Mr. Ankit Shengupta, our research scientist, uh, research um, intern for starting the session with an insightful address, and to our respected chairperson, Dr. Bishwit Rajshwadhuri, for his warm welcome and continued guidance in driving such important con conversations. My gratitude also goes to the organizing team, our technical staff, and everyone working behind the scene who ensured the seamless execution of this event. To all the participants and viewers, thank you for your engagement and commitment to this important cause. We hope today's discussion has inspired action towards building a more resilient future for the Himalayan urban environment. Thank you, and we look forward to your continued support and collaboration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, last, uh, last but not least, this journey will continue. And thank you, Antara, first of all, for your wonderful vote of thanks. But still, one line uh, conclusion I would like to draw uh, through an announcement, another. That said, uh, on behalf of SIAT, as I mentioned, we are doing uh, several initiatives in case of the climate company year. So we are going to start from 21st September, our nature podcast. And that will be one kind of podcast, you can say, that will be the live streaming mode. And hopefully in coming days, we will also catch up with you to have some positive one-to-one -one discussion regarding uh, the issues related to the climate change and its impact on our humanity. So thank you once again. Thanks to all of you and my team, especially, definitely, their support is for that organization and all the participants for that. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. 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 Thank you.